this snowy Friday. We're doing author talk today because our schedules couldn't get together and everything for Monday. So we're going to do it today so you guys can see it on this beautiful snowy day in Houston. So welcome Russell and Sandy to author talk. You know me, Amy, Sue Holly's here and Andrea for the Houston Writers Guild is here. So everybody say hi. Hi. Woo! Friday. We can be excited that it's Friday. Yes. Yeah, well, we also got snow, and Texas doesn't ever get snow, so, I mean, we should be excited for that. I know, it's dangerous to have snow in Houston. Let <laughs> <laughs> uh, me point out that no one is seeing this until Monday, right? So, you're watching this on Monday morning as we're getting ready to head into the weekend. So, um, that's it. I was just going to point out that they're not going to see this till Monday. They'll know okay. that because they'll be watching it Monday. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> so That's they know that. Good clue. That's a good. I'm just clue. saying. <laughs> Andrew, you didn't realize we were inviting you to be part of a crazy group, did you? <laughs> That's okay. That's why we all are crazy people, especially on this snowy Friday. Thank you, sir. Poor David. <laughs> Poor David. David is Sandy's husband. Thank you. Poor David. Special deals for my husband. He has. I know, husband. right? So. You only had to put up with me on author talk, Russell. So what are you talking about, Russell? For your wife. Well, for example, <laughs> Sandy, show stand up. Show us your ugly uh, Christmas sweater. This is Sandy. I she's love going it. to sweater. Uh, she's going to the ugly Christmas sweater party today, aren't you? Oh, that's a nice one. <laughs> See, Thanks. Russell, you're outvoted on this one, babe. <laughs> I'm used to being outvoted. <laughs> I'm always outvoted. Yeah, all right. Glad. Well, so what do you guys have planned for this weekend? Russell, are you, have you learned how to make a fire yet for your camping excavator going on? No, remember I told you I'm going to cheat and okay. with the fire starters. <laughs> but, uh, okay. so that's what I'm going to do. And Sandy's going to an ugly par Christmas party, right, Sandy? Yes. Yes, Russell. <laughs> and Sue's freezing to death in Ohio. Is that right? Yes. It's, it was 18 degrees when I got up this morning. Oh. You sure you won't show us your husband putting wood in the, what was, what'd you call it? The wood burner? It's Somebody wood burner. this little metal it's the only stone. This Texan has been able to live in Ohio for 37 years. Well, why don't you there. just use central heating? <laughs> we have central heating, but. <laughs> The wood burner is a nice heat, and I sit like five feet away from it all winter. Oh, that's nice. I, I have one of those, too. It's called YouTube Fire. <laughs> he does. He literally has one of those. <laughs> I've seen it. And you can do but the you alternate. Can't see the fire. This isn't a fireplace. This is a wood burner. Totally different animal. That we're not going to see. A I picture. bet you you could YouTube that, too, though. You could, like, YouTube a picture of it, you know, burning. I bet you could do that. Uh, Andrea, jump in here. What are you doing? I'm working from home. <laughs> nice. So I'm taking a break so I can participate in the author talk. Aren't you glad you took a break? <laughs> yes, it was time to take a break anyway. <laughs> we always okay. had a great time. And when Russell came to me with this idea for this podcast, he said, don't want it to be one of those serious podcasts. I want it to be fun. So yeah. it has definitely been fun. So we've had yeah, right. we've had quite a few people on um, to interview them. Some from the Writers Guild and some and others that are authors that Sue's been on as a guest. And we're going to get to you in just a minute and talk about your books, Andrea, because I, Andrea and I have done a couple of events recently where we were mm -hmm. taking care of the table together and i really have learned to appreciate her and all that she does lots of surprising stuff and i'm in the cigar bar <laughs> i finished federal right, court fantastic. i've been in federal court all day you know i went and got my suit off because you can't go to the cigar bar with a suit on or i'll get in trouble when i get home Put on the cigar clothes and go to a cigar bar. I've wanted to do one of these from the from the cigar bar for a while. You actually wanted to do one with Fern, with both of you in the cigar bar. Well, oh, yeah. and she will too. <laughs> She's a serious cigar smoker. <laughs> well, Sandy, why Fern's the CEO of the. Right. I'm sorry, Amy. No, you're good. She's the CEO of the Writers Guild, right? Right. 
Yes. Right. So why don't you tell us about Amy, what do you have for us on our tip today? On what? Our social media tip? Oh, yeah. Okay. So I'll share my screen. Russell likes his picture. So Instagram is coming or is working on a new direct messaging app. So Instagram, as everybody knows, is owned by Facebook. So they have their messaging apps, which is WhatsApp and Messenger, and they're working on their own standalone private messaging for Instagram. And it's only available in six countries right now. And once they get everything kind of worked out, that's going to be the newest thing coming for Instagram. Stay tuned for that. That's going to be super exciting. I mean, you can send um, direct messages and stuff now, <clears throat> and like Instagram messages on there, but you don't have a standalone app like Facebook does with Messenger or WhatsApp. So that's going to be the newest Instagram buzz here probably in the new year. And I know Sue's going to be on it next week, right? Oh, I doubt it, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're like the new social media maven, right? Oh, okay. Last night you were switching stuff around. I, I have a question for Amy, though. What is the advantage of Instagram? The advantage of Instagram? Instagram is really popular right now. So that is its own advantage because you always want to stay on current platforms that are popular. Like Twitter's dying off. Not There's not a whole lot of people posting on it and it's not getting a whole lot of like traction because Instagram's taking that spot. Now, the one that everyone needs to kind of watch out for and be on and keep an eye out is for YouTube because YouTube did... I'm not sure if they were a sponsor in the World Series, but they had YouTube TV, which was also advertised everywhere. And so YouTube, I feel like, is going to sneak up there and become in the top three. Right now, it's Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn still hanging in there, but I think it's more Snapchat. But I feel like Snapchat's probably going to end up being replaced with YouTube. You can do YouTube lives from your phone now. They're going to have the TV coming. A bunch of different things are coming. So I'd keep an eye on YouTube for sure, but it's its own advantage because it's popular. Now we have a page, Sandy. We have a page called Author Talk on YouTube, it's and right. I'm glad that I'm Sue. I'm glad you brought this up because I would I, I would like to ask everyone who's watching this to subscribe to our page. It doesn't cost you anything. It doesn't hurt anything. It just helps our Author Talk page. And when Sandy posts this me this video there. Uh, please like them and post a comment because it changes the algorithm and uh, YouTube then offers it to more people that are interested in this t subject. Right. Okay. And, and so actually it's, it's a channel was what I only learned that this weekend when I kept looking for it, but mm -hmm. author talk is a channel. And um, so if you go, you can subscribe to different channels. Right. I don't know. Does it, Amy? Does it let you know when we post? If you're, if I'm subscribing to the channel, <laughs> yes, yeah, it does. You know when there's a new video post. Yeah, because I got it. I got one earlier today. You had posted the Brian Beard in one or something, and I got notified. Mm. I follow you. <laughs> yeah, we but you, want, we, Russell. Thank you for saying that because we want you to follow, follow us on YouTube and make comments and and look at the video and watch it because we've had some great interviews on here and we want you to go watch them we want to get to a thousand views that's our goal to start with a thousand views on the youtube channel and then the next goal is going to be a hundred thousand so yeah well we've interviewed great people but there's so much information there i think that authors need and different things like that, different struggles that they're going with that maybe they feel like they're the only one. So it's so rich in information that I think it's important for people to go and watch old ones like that. Okay, I got one question for you, Amy, also. Okay. I noticed on one of the videos that you and Sandy made, you had almost 1,900 views already, 1,895, right. and I freaked out when I saw that. How did you <laughs> get all those views? How do how do I get more views for my videos on Facebook? Well, there's several different ways you can do it. If you want organic views, then you share your video on however many pages you have. Some people have, you know, 15. Some people don't only have that one. Share it on that one, but you also have other people share it. So on Sandy's videos, it's me sharing it. It's my mom. It's my whole family. It's all Sandy's friends. There's a plethora of people that are sharing your videos, and the more you share, the more people are going to see it organically. 
Now, if you don't have those options available to you, you don't have a whole lot of people that are sharing your videos and things like that, then promoting it by basing it will also get you a lot of views on your videos as well. It just costs money to do that. <clears throat> so the best way to do it is organically and just make connections and ask people, hey, if I share some of your videos, will you share mine? And we can kind of grow and do it that way. That's the best way to do it. Okay. I see. So um, actually, Russell, I'm looking at the one that you're talking about that has um, 1,800 views. But also, if you look at the um, one right beside it, it has 9,000 views. So, um, so how, yeah. And and that's Amy. That's when you and I were were practicing on the B Live. Right. That has 9,000 views. So. Right. But how long has it been up there, right? So you also have to take into account the longer you have videos up there in the under video section. If you do a Facebook Live and people like the information, they're going to go look at your other Facebook Live videos that you've done, just counting up how many views you get. So if I've had a video on there since October, yeah, I could have 9,000 views because if I've promoted it and then I've shared it and I've done all these other things and people keep going back and rewatching it, that's going to count. So you're totally do hashtags do any good? Yeah, because people will research that and they'll type those in to see them. That's why they're also important. But you can go back after you do a Facebook Live and put your hashtags in. If you forget, it'll still pop up. There's yeah. So what is it? If I go to YouTube, what am I want to look for? Author, uh, author talk. And then you'll get a whole line of different author uh, talks. With that in the heading, then you scrub down to wait till you find uh, our author talk. Okay. You'll see Sandy, because Sandy's the common denominator in all those videos. So you basically, you look for Sandy. Okay. Actually, Amy's kind of the common denominator. Oh. <laughs> wait till I find the face I recognize. Well, yeah, but you can also do it if you see a video that. You know, me or Sandy or Russell were in, you can click on that video and then it'll have author talk. And you click right. that and that'll automatically take you to the channel. That's just a quicker way of finding it than scrolling because sometimes I can take forever and I don't always have the patience for that. And Sue, one of the ways, one of the things, because you you subscribe, you said to Joanna Penn's right. YouTube. And so right now I have Joanna Penn and some of the other people in author talk is in my list of channels that I subscribe to. Okay. So, so let's, Sue's talking, Sandy, tell us about your big success last night. We had a great time. Sue, t you, tell, you talk first. Tell them about what we did last night. And I'll go well, find the picture. Okay, well, we revealed the new um, cover for the re-release of the first book in the Peg Shaw series <clears throat> that James Price did. I absolutely love this cover. Absolutely love it. And um, to me, it's a lot of fun to just the whole picture. I, I just get a kick out of it. Well, it's and beautiful. It's so much fun to work with. I, I loved working with him. It's beautiful. It's professional. Yes. And, and as and I said, oh, I'm sorry, Sandy. No, no, no. I, I can't see you right now because I've got the show on the screen. But he, um, he captured... If this was his idea. Mm -hmm. He had an idea and said, let's don't go with any of the things, ideas that we gave him. He goes, I've got a different idea. And that's because when we talked about the name of it, he saw cold case, the file that would say cold case on it. Uh -huh. And that's what had him go. And then we told him that we wanted to do more coffee cup, do the coffee cup thing. So anyway, that was a picture of it. And he, it was his idea. So I thought that was it was based on the information we gave him that was good he did good. And, you know, and he was so easy to work with any changes we wanted he he did not complain he just did them and if our ideas ended up being horrible we could see it pretty quick and then we would go like uh no i don't think so and we'd go back i mean he did a lot of changes before he probably we did 25 different iterations of this right time. right <laughs> So, so you know how frustrating that could be, right? Because yes, I totally so, how would you compare this to your other experience with the cover? My original cover? Yeah. How would you compare this to it your sucked. original? <laughs> <laughs> it was so blah, and there was nothing I could do about it. So one of the things I've learned uh, 
by doing the first two books, publishing them the way I did. And I do not think it was the company I used. I think any of the companies would have done the same thing. So there's nothing negative as far as that goes, but you don't have control. And I am a control freak, but I gave over a lot of control to somebody that did not care about my product as much as I did. What did you say? I said, yes, you are. <laughs> But he said it like so. Slow. I'm just saying you're right about something, Sue. That's a good thing. <laughs> so now I have control, and yeah. that that is important to me because I did not like the first two covers, and I had very, very, very little choice about it. Almost no say. Once, I mean, you look at what they provided, and I, I took the best I could, which I didn't like, but. Um, I don't consider what I did a mistake as much as a learning experience. And I go back to that seminar of yours at the Authors Guild in October where oh, the three of you got up and we were talking about the mistakes. And I thought to myself, I'll be standing there one day going, these are my mistakes, so don't make these. And well, actually, you probably should be on that panel next year. <laughs> But the thing is, is, I mean, it's a learning experience. It's a, it's been, it's been expensive, but it's been very, very interesting. And um, there's a lot of information out there that hits and washes over um, first time self publishers. And there needs to be an avenue that can direct you to somebody or a group of people that can blow away all the extra noise you don't need to hear. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. It does make sense. And, um, and it's, and it's not something we've heard for the, I mean, this is not something we're hearing for the first right. time. So that's why I love working with authors. You know that. So, um, everybody knows how much I love working with authors. <laughs> like, okay. Last night, I think I'm starting to sound like a broken record here. So, um, Anyway, so that was great. Thank you, Sue. We had a great party last night celebrating it. We had such a good party that I had a couple of people that said, I didn't see the address listed on the, in the Facebook event. And I'm like, because that's because it's virtual. So, right. um, but I think we had, because we had people watching from several different locations. And if I counted up all the different people, I counted right at 55 people. That oh, my land. So, so we gave away prizes. We gave away two copies of the book. Russell won. I got a cover. I got an <laughs> autographed copy. He won an autograph. Thank you, Amy. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, we had a good time. So that was, that was, I've done other other Facebook parties. That was goes down as one of the best ones, the, except okay. the one we actually did in Russell's house. Yeah, and well, you didn't know what you were doing that day. <laughs> that was the most unusual one we've ever had because yes. we all went to Russell's place, and we were on. Amy had a phone. Her husband had a phone. His two sons had a phone, and I had my laptop. And everybody is viewing it and talking about it from a different perspective. That was so much fun, though. I remember that. That was so much fun. And it was a lot of fun for those in the room, actually. So that yeah. was that was a good a good thing too. So and Russell went out on the balcony and showed us the beautiful um, view from his balcony at night with the lights on and stuff. Oh wow! Nice. So that was a good one. Um, okay, so today we have a each time we have an author talk, we have a special guest. Up to date, we have two because we just had this great event with Sue. We wanted to talk about that and hear about it. when we have a when we're part of a huge success, we like telling about it as well as telling about some of the challenges. So last week we talked about the success of the Amazon campaign. Today we're talking about the success of the cover reveal. For the first time ever, we showed the cover in building that in, in the marketing world, that's part of building the anticipation that right. your book is coming out. And so today we have another special guest, Andrea Barbosa. Hi. And Andrea, I have a copy of your book that I bought the last time we were together here. This is, it's, 
this is not your latest book though, is it? Or is this the no, latest? This is my first one actually. Oh, that's a first one. Okay. So massive black hole. Um, and it's um, award winning. So I, I've started it. I haven't finished it yet, Andrea. So I can't wait to finish it. Um, took it with me to North Carolina because I thought I'd finish it there, but didn't quite get enough time to read there. So we were together at the Wright Space Family Reunion. Yeah. The Houston Writers Guild. Andrea and Russell and I are all three on the board of the Houston Writers Guild. So the Houston Writers Guild sponsored a table, and Andrea and I were the ones that were there. So, um, but before that, I actually talked to her at Indie Palooza, went over to the table where her books were. That's when I realized how many books she has. I'm like, Andrea. Remember, Andrea, I was like, you wrote all of these books. I mean, she, how many books do you have, Andrea? I have four. And uh, I, do, um, I do have a pen name where I write my romance under another name. So I have two of the romance. The newest one is actually what you're probably talking about that just came out um, at the end of August. So we had that party like in October. Right. right because of the uh, flood and all that, it kind of like delayed a little bit all the uh, um, activities. And I'm working on the third one to complete the trilogy. Yay. And so, yes. so who is your publisher? Uh, right now I'm with Inklings Publishing. Okay. I thought you were, I wasn't, I wasn't sure if you were with Inklings, but I knew you were at the table, at her table. So I assumed that she was your publisher. So Fern, is the uh is inklings publisher that's her company her publishing company yes. so um so we we have a great family of of authors and uh all at the writers guild and we you know i love the work that we're doing there so then andrea when i was at the so i, I got that's when i realized you had a bunch of books then we go to this right right space and i'm talking to andrea and i'm like oh my gosh andrea i didn't know you did all this i mean she's got friends all over the world very international and so what i want you to do now is andrea you tell so first then let me finish that by saying she does um an interview with people who are artists whether they're painters writers or musicians and she has a blog where she posts those interviews and she has interviewed people from around the world very very impressive andrea and through her building the relationships with these people uh, it just leads to more and more stuff and andrea herself is from brazil um that's right isn't it andrea brazil yeah, okay. <laughs> So, so I want you to talk now, Andrea. You've been quiet the whole time. So I want you to talk now and just tell us. Well, it's because Amy won't be quiet. Tell us about your story, Andrea. And you keep interrupting. <laughs> yeah, Amy, quit interrupting. <laughs> um, no, I have a blog that I decided to um, pay for and uh, help writers and artists and musicians and whoever is trying to break through with it in the indie. Um, anything. So my main um, social media to find these people is actually on Twitter because it's quick, fast, and it reaches a lot of people. So usually I um, tell people on Twitter that I'm looking for um, people to interview, and so and I put it up differently. Sometimes I just ask for the musicians, composers, and all that, and it's been very, very interesting because I've. Uh, I've actually interviewed a composer of uh, classical music and film scores in Australia. I've interviewed a rock musician in Germany. And all these people, you know, just through Twitter, um, as well as, of course, like a lot of writers and authors here locally, as well as all over the world as well. I got one one time from the uh, Isle of Man, which was a very interesting <laughs> place that I, it's not in our radar normally anyway. Um, Did you ask him about the motorcycle race? No. Oh. <laughs> but um, it, it, it's very interesting. And through that, um, you know, they end up sharing my, my blog as well, share my Twitter. We do a lot of retweets. So we end up like reaching a wider and uh, international audience. Um, so that's basically what I do on my blog. And um, and this is, uh, I actually 
found somebody to, uh, you know, like my last book, the romance one is in Greece. So I had to do a lot of research to, because I hadn't been there. And then I ended up going at the end of publishing the book. But I wanted to make sure that all the uh, historic facts, the mythology was correct. So through that and through these interviews, I um, met somebody in Greece that is actually an anthropologist and historian. So through all this collaboration and working, he was able to look at my manuscript and correct and edit the parts that were about Greece that I didn't have very good or there was some things that would not really pertain there or something. So that was a very, very interesting thing through all this collaboration and networking. So that's the uh, Twitter story, <laughs> basically. So how did you get into writing in the beginning, Andrea? Um, I always wanted to be a writer. Since I was in Brazil, I used to write lots of short stories, you know, during uh, my vacation times, two, three months, instead of uh, going to the beach a lot and stuff, I would stay home like writing. Um, <laughs> I would just like write romances and stories and I always wanted to, to, that's always I wanted to do. So a couple of years ago, I quit my corporate job and I said, you know, now I have enough time to go ahead and write. So that's when Massive Black Hole came out first. I had enough time to write that. Then I ended up uh, putting together a poetry collection. And then I was actually challenged to write uh, a more specific genre because Massive Black Hole is kind of a psychological thriller, but more like a general fiction. So some of my friends that write literary fiction said, why don't you start writing a romance and you do a trilogy so we can compare like what sells more because romance is usually um, much higher selling uh, genre than anything else. So right, that's I what I write. Now, romance. <laughs> what? I said that's what I write now. Romance. <laughs> yeah, I want to read your romance. <laughs> Except, in, Except they keep dying. Romantic. Every time I get someone romantic, they get killed. <laughs> yeah, so I I fell into the uh, trap and decided to do the trilogy, and uh, that's the story that I am right now. So um, it's been very interesting to do that because, you know, because if I like international things and history and archaeology, I made it to the point that I enjoy writing it because I have to do a lot of research too for countries that I like and for history and for mythology. So that's what I like mostly about it. I just love hearing you talk. <laughs> <laughs> now I can get rid of the accents. <laughs> yeah, neither can I, but yours is kind of a little bit better than mine. <laughs> a little bit. It's a beautiful accent. I love it. I love it. It is. So I know I, you're not talking to me. That's true. <laughs> you're right, Andrea. I didn't. I didn't mention in the beginning when I introduced you though about the on your on the board. You are the one that does the Houston Writers Guild Press, and yes. you're currently working on a book. So tell about that. Well, we have a contest every year. So this year the contest is going on until the 31st of December, of course, because of the pledge in Houston, we had to push a lot of things. Um, so there is still time for people to submit. You have to go to our website, so the HoustonWritersGuild.org, to find out more about it. There's a tab specifically for that, for the contest. There is a theme to the contest, and uh, it's about traveling, and it's about, you know, getting, uh, your perceptions together when you were looking at the world. Actually, you should uh, write something, Russell. You just yeah, went you, to China. So. What I thought of. So <laughs> you said something I interesting. Like <laughs> yeah, so it's short stories up to 5,000 words. This time we're doing And then uh, we're going to have two prizes, the know. first prize and uh, a runner-up. And um, so we're still actually taking the uh, submissions until the December 31st. And uh, we have uh, judges that are going to be rating and uh, scoring the submissions so that we can see who is going to be the winner. And if we have enough entry that we can actually produce the book, that's the main goal. And then we're going to have a book that um, we should be launching together at the uh, next conference, which is in the beginning of May. May 4 to 6. Actually, it's like a little longer. It's gonna, this time is going to be like the whole week. but 
on the Friday, May 4th, that's where we are shooting for, for the launching of the book, as long as we have enough entries and we have enough, you know, good entries that we can promote and make a book. The last one was very successful, the one that we launched in uh, uh, April, this year's conference. Um, it's very, very nicely done, um, has been received very well. And uh, right now, on the ebooks of all the Houston Writers Guild books are on sale for 99 cents for the month of December on Amazon. So that's another thing that the Houston Writers Guild does. Besides be providing this um, community in Houston of writers, and having two conferences each year and all the things that go on between the conferences. I know Russell has participated in some of the, um, what, what were those things they had at the libraries, Russell? Were they write-ins or what was that? Yes, for uh, people in the community that wanted to learn how to write, uh, the, the one that I spoke at out in North, Northwest Harris County Library, it was, there was like 40 people there that most of them had never been to anything like that. They had all, they all had, a, most of these people had either uh, something in mind to write or they were working on it or they were afraid to and wanted, had questions. And it was a really impressive group of people. I felt honored to be there and to answer their questions. And the Houston Writers Guild has had these things all over town all year. It's been a pretty exciting thing to be a part of. And that yeah, I've participated in some. These workshops are really, really interesting. I've done some in uh, Sugar Land, a couple of them in Katy, and another library that I forgot where. Um, and uh, a lot of times I do some uh, presentations or sometimes it's uh, interaction with them and I make them write actually, you know, like on workshops, I give one uh, about flash fiction because I don't know if you all know too, but I'm also the editor for the uh, flash fiction at the, uh, the Ocotillo Review Literary Journal. So- I did not know about that. So tell <laughs> say a little bit about that. Huh? Say a little bit about that. Yeah, um, Tony Burnett, he has this uh, journal, he just, came up with this idea not long ago. So we are, uh, um, the, the second volume should be launching in the beginning of the year. We just had the first one in the summer. So there will be like a publications for, for this journal uh, twice a year. It's called the Ocotillo Review. And um, it accepts poetry, short stories, um, and flash fiction. And I am the flash fiction editor for it. It accepts submissions twice a year. Uh, all the submissions that are accepted are paid submissions. So it's a literary journal that actually pays the authors. Where can they, where can people that are listening to this find out about that? Uh, you can go to the ocotillareview.com and Calisto Gaia Press. It's K A L L I S T O press.org, which is the publishing, publishing company for the uh, Ocotillo Review Literary Journal. And uh, the next submission phase is probably going to be from February or March to uh, the summer for the, the third edition. Um, so anyhow, we're talking about the workshop. I did a workshop for flash fiction that was very interactive. I got people, you know, interested in uh, submitting and writing that genre as well, because a lot of people don't know about flash fiction. So yeah, the Houston Writers Guild um, offers a lot of those Russell has participated in some panels too in some of the libraries where we bring uh, writers that are genre, genre oriented and they will talk about, you know, crime, for example, like how to write mysteries and we get three or four writers that um, that's their specialty uh, or romance or, you know, whatever the genre. Are. And a lot of people come, these are like free services for the people that are there in the library and uh, a lot of them come and learn a lot of things and they ask questions and very, very exciting. Um, the last one I did was in Richmond Library actually. And uh, I was talking about how to get yourself published. And um, they had a, 
advertise that because it was like a library festival and uh, there were people coming all the way from Tomball because they heard about it and they actually wanted to participate and, and, uh, and see the presentation. They were very excited about uh, the, all the options that they have to get published. And I think that's a great thing. And I, I would love for us to go to other libraries. So we've got to check to see if there's some kind of writer's guild or something in Ohio, because this gives not only the guild opportunity, but it gives Russell an opportunity and Andrea an opportunity to be there, to have their books, to show their books, but also to show their knowledge. And that was one of the things that impressed me when I was listening to Andrea and she was telling me this, and she told me the story of being being there and she told me some of the other presentations that she had done and i'm like what an opportunity for people to to hear her and for her to be heard because that's a great way for her to get visibility is speaking at these libraries and then one hears her wants her at another one so it's a great thing and a great way to sell books too so um so i love that andrea take just a couple of a minutes so and tell us what is, and, and I know it's, it's really a big thing, but just short, briefly, what is flash fiction? Flash fiction is a very, very short story. So it's a short story that has to be between, well, it can be from 50 words all the way up to about 1,000, no more than that. The normal is about 500 to 750. So some journals, some places, they may accept something like that. The Ocotillo Review, I limited to 500 words. Um, the challenge in writing flash fiction is that it is not a paragraph or, you know, just uh, something that doesn't make sense. It has to be a, a, a short story. So the challenge is right. It's uh, choosing the right words to make sense and have a beginning, you know, a story and an ending to it that, that actually makes the reader want more and think about it. That's great. And so that would be a great practice for all authors, don't you think? If you had to write your entire story in 500 words. So, um, yeah, that's what, exactly what happened. To, I, I, I like challenges of, uh, you know, to, to stretch my writing. And um, I found out about a flash fiction contest. And I looked at it and said, there's no way I write novels that are 50,000 words. You know, how can I write a short story that is this short? I mean, I do short stories too, but they are usually, you know, longer between four to 8,000 words or something, but nothing that, that short. So I forced myself to write one and I submitted to the contest and uh, I actually won a, um, a little prize for each. I was chosen, not first, second, or third, but uh, uh, they liked my story and, and got it published. So the following year, I decided to do it again. I wrote another story, submitted to the contest, and I actually won first prize. So I started getting more excited about flash fiction, reading more and participating in more um, in the workshops. And uh, then I ended up getting um, invited by Tony Burnett to be the flash fiction editor for the Ocotillo Review. And, uh, it's been a very, very interesting adventure too, because I get to read a lot of submissions and uh, edit and understand also more for my own writing, you know, like how we can improve that. That's so yes, awesome. uh, writing flash fiction is a very, very good uh, uh, practice for, for writers. So Andrea, uh, we're gonna have to start wrapping things up. How can people get in touch with you? So do you give us your blog um, title and, and, and we'll put it all in the comment section, but how to, if, if somebody wanted to submit something either for the Writers Guild, Flash Fiction, any of that, how would they get in touch with you? Um, well, just to, to talk to me, they can email me. It's, um, I'm gonna have to, to give it to you. So, uh, I-P-A-N-E-M-A-R-I-O at sbcglobal.net. They can also reach me through Twitter at A-N-D-Y-B-0-8-10. That's my tweet, Twitter handle. And uh, my blog is the name of my book, Massive Black Hole, um, dot blogspot.com. And uh, I'm also on Facebook. I have a Facebook page for the Massive Black Hole book and the um, 
the page for my uh, pen name for the romance, which is Andrea Bailey, Andrea of White. And I'm also on Amazon under both names, different profiles for all of my books. And what else? I'm also on Instagram. It's also, you, yeah, um, so what we'll do is go ahead and just put some of those links yeah. on, on the comments. So that's great. So Andrea, thank you so much for being with us today. This, thank I, you so uh, much for having me. Well, I, I, as soon as I, we, uh, as soon as we've had our day there together, I told Russell, I want to have Andrea on author drop because she's such an interesting person. And I hope everybody gets just a glimpse of what a great person you are just from this interview and wants to do more. And, um, and I want you to all go look, read her blog, look at the interviews she's done. She made the offer to me that if I had anybody I wanted to have interviewed to send them to her. So Russell, Sue, there's your opportunity to be interviewed. And it's not, it's, it's written, it's a written interview. So she'll give you the yeah. questions and you write the answers. So Sue, thank you again for being with us. Yay. Sue's going to be a regular because she's just like, okay. <laughs> she not only provides comic she's, relief. She's our comic relief. She not only provides comic relief, <laughs> she actually is a challenge for Russell, which that's a good thing. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we love having you all. Of course, loved having Amy. Amy and I are doing a web, not a webinar. It's a what, Amy? Info session. We're doing an info session Monday night, not a <laughs> webinar because we're selling nothing. We're not signing you up for anything. This is just Amy and I sharing with you through Facebook Live the trends that are predicted for 2018 in the world of publishing and social media marketing. Um, I've already received notice that there, Facebook has a new Facebook creator which is going to be a different level with Facebook. And I signed up for that. So we'll talk a little bit about that. And um, Amy's found some new stuff with Instagram. Any, any previews of what you might be thinking of talking about Monday night, Amy? Well, Facebook's getting ready to make some massive changes. And Instagram, besides doing the direct messaging, is also going to make some other changes. So those are going to I hate massive changes. <laughs> those are going to be my two main... But Sue's got it down because she's the expert, right? Yeah, she's an expert now. <laughs> she's gonna be Sue, too. what's your Twitter name? Of course. <laughs> I don't have a clue. <laughs> <laughs> and Russell, as always, you know, you're just a joy and you you are the comic relief for this group, I promise. Well, making so, other people feel better about themselves, that's my gift. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that what it is? I'm glad That's my gift. <laughs> I just make the world feel better. I'm yes, you did. So we're all going to join together and pray for Melinda. That's his wife, because she lives twenty four seven. So yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So have a great day. It is. You're seeing this on Monday. We're gonna go have a great weekend because it's really yeah. Friday for us. So. Yeah. Um, so one more author talk comes to a close. So God bless you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.